stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am continuing my review of the player cards in the Pallid Mask, the uh, fourth Mythos pack in the Dunwich, or not Dunwich, the Path to Carcosa cycle. There are uh, two survivor cards and uh, one neutral card that we are going to look at today. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, maybe uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I uh, There's uh, another card in here that I'm very excited about, and uh, we're going to take a look at that right now, so let's get started. The uh, first survivor card in the pack is Waylay. It's a three-cost event with two agility skill icons and the tactic trait. It has the game text, choose an exhausted non-elite enemy at your location and test agility X, where X is that enemy's evade value. If you succeed, defeat that enemy. I uh, really like this card, and it's uh, probably the one I'm looking forward to testing uh, the most. I uh, really enjoy playing evasion-based decks, and I've always felt that uh, investigators should be able to complete scenarios by sneaking past enemies rather than killing them. Wendy Adams is uh, certainly quite capable of taking down Umordoth or, or the experiment, but it... Uh, doesn't feel very th thematic for a street urchin to uh, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a great old one. She's uh, much more likely to sneak around and avoid uh, direct confrontations uh, with the mythos uh, whenever possible. That's probably uh, some of my uh, Cthulhu uh, role-playing game uh, heritage coming into play there. In that game, you, you certainly uh, confronting uh, enemies is often uh, extremely dangerous, and so uh, sneaking past them is always uh, usually the preferred option. Some players have uh, have taken evasion-based decks to an extreme, tackling campaigns with so-called uh, pacifist decks that uh, avoid killing anything if if possible, not even a, a swarm of rats. I've played a, a few variations of pacifist decks, and uh, they're challenging to pilot, but they can they can also be a, a great deal of fun. There are a couple problems with an evasion-based approach, however. First, uh, you don't earn victory points for evading enemies, only killing them. And uh, this isn't a big deal in multiplayer, since there's probably at least one member of your team who's quite capable of taking down uh, enemies for you. But it's uh, something of a catch-22 in solo play. Building a good evasion deck can cost quite a few experience points, but uh, you have to kill enemies to get some of that experience, which uh, sort of defeats the purpose of evasion. The uh, second problem with evasion is that, that it doesn't deal with uh, some enemies permanently. Hunters, as uh, well as enemies that move as a result of encounter cards, can be a huge pain in the ass, since they will uh, they will give chase. They'll force you to either stay one step ahead of them or evade them uh, multiple times per, per scenario, which uh, can really tax your actions. After you evade a Night Gaunt for the third or fourth time, you, you really start to wonder whether you would have been better off killing it in the first place. Investigators do have a few solutions to the hunter problem, including uh, Close Call from the Core Set and uh, Snare Trap from a Phantom of Truth Mythos pack. However, uh, both of those cards cost experience points, which uh, brings us back to problem uh, number one, which is how do you earn those experience points if you're not killing enemies? Waylay uh, gives evasion-based decks another option to deal with enemies that, ju that just won't give up the chase. The, uh, the card explorer's design space that was introduced in A Phantom of Truth, that uh, pack included two cards that allowed investigators to use different actions and skills to evade enemies. Archaic Glyph's uh, Prophecy Foretold lets you make an investigate action to evade an enemy, while uh, Cheap Shot, a rogue event, lets you take a fight action to accomplish the same thing. Waylay explores a similar design space, except now you're essentially fighting enemies uh, with agility. It lets you make an agility test of uh, dif difficulty X, where X is that enemy's evade value. However, rather than evading the enemy, you defeat it outright, which is uh, which usually requires fight action, fight actions, and uh, combat skill tests. It's important to note, however, that uh, Waylay is neither a fight action nor an evade action. So, if you're engaged with uh, multiple enemies, it will uh, provoke an attack of opportunity. The uh, ability to defeat an enemy outright, uh, regardless of its health, is, is obviously extremely powerful. You can uh, even use it to take down uh, 
a brood of Yogg-Sothoth in the uh, undimensioned and unseen scenario. The uh, the only card besides the uh, besides the, uh, the the exotic formula you get in that scenario that you can use to take them down. Obviously, being able to take down even something like the conglomeration of spheres with its six health in with basically taking one action or two actions is that's fantastic. Now Waitley is it's not perfect, of course. It it costs three resources, which is a little pri on the pricey side, especially for survivors. It uh, works only on non-elite enemies, and uh, that enemy must be exhausted, which means you'll uh, probably need to take an action to evade it first, so it uh, it will be exhausted. Still, you know, taking two actions to defeat an enemy isn't that bad, considering it could take just as many, if not more, fight actions to uh, to accomplish the same thing. I should also mention that uh, Waylay has the tactic trait, which means it, it is a card that Mark Harrigan can include in his deck. However, uh, Mark Harrigan's agility isn't that great, so he's, uh, he's probably better off uh, killing enemies the old-fashioned way. The second survivor card in the pack is an upgrade for a chance encounter, an event released in uh, Where Doom Awaits. Level 2, a chance encounter costs X resources, which has willpower and intellect skill icons, and the fortune trait. It has the game text, choose an ally asset with printed cost, uh, printed resource cost X in any player's discard pile. Put that asset into play under your control. I was uh, quite surprised to see an upgrade for a chance encounter in uh, the Pallid Mask. Uh, largely because I wasn't expecting it. I guess I thought it might be too soon to, to see a, an upgrade for it. However, you know, when you think about it, it's really a natural progression of the card. The, uh, the level 0, a chance encounter, lets you pull an ally from the discard pile for a resource, but uh, you had to discard it at the end of the round. Level 2, a chance encounter, lets you pay the full cost of the ally, but uh, you get to keep it. So that begs the question why you'd bother picking up level 2 a chance encounter over its level 0 counterpart. And uh, what I think you've got here is two different tools uh, for two different types of allies. As I mentioned during my review of the level 0 a chance encounter, the card uh, works extremely well with allies with effects that trigger some abilities uh, when they enter play. Min Tae Fan could grab herself a, a laboratory assistant to draw herself a couple of cards, or an art student to discover a clue at uh, her location. Agnes could bring back an arcane initiate to search for a spell, you know, confident in the knowledge that it's going to disappear at the end of um, at the end of that turn, taking the uh, the doom with it. You could also use a level zero chance encounter to grab a stray cat, which you could then trigger automatically uh, to evade a non-elite enemy at your location. You could also use it to uh, to grab the Red Gloved Man, an ally from the Lost in Time and Space Mythos pack. The uh, the Red Gloved Man isn't going to stick around anyway, so le using the level 0 uh, a chance encounter to boost two skills for a turn makes a lot of sense. Level 2 a chance encounter is probably a better choice for those allies you simply can't live without. The uh, The most obvious contender is Duke. If uh, Duke happens to meet an untimely end, Ashcan Peak can play level 2 a chance encounter, pay 2 resources, and return him to play under his control. Level 0 a chance encounter would work too, but uh, I think if you've played Ashcan Peak, you'll agree that uh, bringing back Duke from the dead permanently is a, is a much better option than uh, bringing him back until uh, just the end of the round. I could also see playing level 2 a chance encounter to bring back allies such as... Uh, a level 2 Peter Sylvester from the Dunwich Legacy Deluxe Expansion, or a level 3 Aquina from Lost in Time and Space. These allies, uh, they can do some serious work for you over the course of a scenario, but uh, they need more time than a turn to uh, really shine. You, the, the same could be said for several allies outside the Survivor class, uh, including Dr. Mylan Christopher and uh, Leo DeLuca. I uh, may not have been expecting level 2 a chance encounter, but I'm certainly glad it exists. Its uh, effect is similar to that of its level 0 counterpart, but I think it's intended for a different uh, type of deck. If you're trying to abuse allies with effects that trigger when they come into play, or you don't really care which ally you grab from the discard pile, perhaps because you were planning to kill it off later that turn anyway, level 0 uh, a chance encounter is, is going to be more than adequate for your needs. 
However, however, if there is a particular ally that you can't live without, such as Duke, you'll probably want to go with the level 2 a chance encounter so you can pull him back from the discard pile permanently in the event that uh, your game has gone sideways. A lot of uh, cards in this Mythos pack seem to be about giving players options, and uh, a level 2 chance encounter is, uh, is another good example of, of that design philosophy at work. The final card in the pack is another upgrade, this time for Emergency Cash, an event from the core set that I'm sure everybody has uh, plays two of in their decks. This version of Emergency Cash costs three experience points and has the supply trait. It has the game text, gain four resources or place four supply tokens among assets controlled by investigators at your location or any combination thereof. This is the uh, third version of Emergency Cache that has been released. The uh, Level 2 Emergency Cache uh, came out in the, Blood in the Blood on the Altar Mythos pack, and uh, it lets you gain three resources and uh, draw a card. Now, uh, three experience points is uh, a lot to pay for one extra resource. If uh, that's all this card did, I don't think it would see much play. However, uh, level 3 Emergency Cash lets you gain 4 resources or distribute 4 supply tokens among assets controlled by investigators at your locations. You can even take a combination of resources or uh, supply tokens depending uh, on what works best for your board state. There is uh, only one other card that allows you to add supply tokens to cards in play, and uh, that's Contraband, a rogue event that was released in the Miskatonic uh, Museum Mythos pack. Now, I consider Contraband to be among the weakest cards released during uh, the Dunwich Legacy. For starters, it costs four resources, which is a lot, even, uh, even for the uh, normally wealthy rogues. If uh, I'm spending four resources on one of the most expensive events in the game, I expect it to do a lot of work uh, during my games. Unfortunately, Contraband simply didn't uh, deliver the goods with any consistency. More often than not, it just uh, sat in my hand, looking all expensive and all, and uh, as I waited for an opportunity to play it, which usually never came. So uh, once I earned some experience points, Contraband was usually uh, among the first cards to, uh, to get cut in favor of something better. Level 3 Emergency Cash uh, gives players another option to add supply tokens. The, uh, the, big the big question here is, is it worth it? The, the biggest problem I have with adding supply tokens to cards is that each supply token equates to an action. If I'm playing a card such as level 0 first aid, which uh, we looked at in an earlier review, it's going to take four actions to get full of value out of it. That is, you're going to have one action to play it and three actions to trigger it. If I add four supply tokens to first aid, I'm giving myself the option of taking four more actions to trigger it. It seems highly unlikely that I'm going to spend four actions on first aid, much less eight. That's almost three full turns. Now, I've been tracking how many turns a typical game lasts when I'm playing in solo, and most of the games seem to end in 10 or 12 turns. Am I really going to spend almost a third or a quarter of the game triggering first aid? That seems pretty unlikely. When you look at, look at it from that perspective, adding supply tokens seems like overkill. Of course, you don't have to add all four supply tokens. You can take some as resources instead. I'm just not sure that added flexibility is, is worth the three experience points. That said, there are uh, ten cards in the game that, uh, that use supplies. Both versions of uh, First Aid, the, uh, the, level, the other level version which we looked at earlier in the review, Flashlight, uh, Liquid Courage, Lockpicks, Painkiller, Smoking Pipe, and uh, all three level 4 Strange Solutions. I could see myself playing level 3 Emergency Cash to uh, add supplies to Flashlight, Lockpicks, or uh, Strange Solutions, Acidic Eye Core. Uh, Strange Solution, Acidic Eye Core in particular, is incredibly powerful, but it uh, enters play with only 3 supply, which is probably not enough to see you through to the end of a typical scenario. It also happens to have a very awkward upgrade path, and it costs four experience points, which it mean which means it may be uh, difficult to acquire two copies depending on how you built your deck, and uh, how the campaign is going. Level three emergency cash may be uh, a reasonable alternative uh, to a second copy of that card. 
We've seen a lot of cards that uh, add ammo, charges, and supplies to assets, uh, beginning with the extra ammunition way back in the core set. And uh, I'm not convinced including these types of cards in your deck is a good idea, or even necessary in most cases. You know, at its heart, the Arkham Horror LCG is a race, and the, the faster you can finish that race against the agenda deck, the better off you'll be, since the encounter deck won't have a chance to, to mount a counterattack, which inevitably puts pressure on the assets on the table, the cards in your hand, and, uh, and the resources in your resource pool. If you're adding a lot of cards to your deck that provide extra ammo, charges, or supplies, it almost feels like you're setting yourself up for a marathon rather than a sprint. And uh, if playing solo has taught me anything, it's, uh, it's how to sprint, which is why I harp on the importance of, of maintaining tempo so much. Cards that add ammo, charges, and supplies usually don't help your tempo, which is uh, why I tend to keep them uh, out of my decks. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, shotgun is one that comes to mind. It comes with only two ammo, so it, uh, it makes sense to include a copy or two of extra ammunition in your deck to, uh, to make sure you've got enough shots for a scenario. But uh, I also think it's worth asking yourself whether you need to upgrade to the shotgun in the first place. Uh, maybe there's a there's a better solution. Speaking of solutions, strain solution acidic eye core is a is a powerful upgrade, but it's also somewhat difficult to acquire, and it comes with only three supply. Picking up a copy or two of level three emergency cash lets you keep that acidic eye for eye core flowing. But again, I think it's worth asking yourself whether strain solution acidic eye core is the best plan of attack, if you need to play another three experience point card to uh, to really make it shine. Despite my misgivings about the whole add ammo charges supply thing, they do have their uses. Uh, I think a scenario such as a, a Phantom of Truth, for example, forces you to play the long game, which uh, means running out of ammo charges or supplies is a threat to contend with, and I could certainly see the designers exploring that uh, design space further in the future. Level 3 Emergency Cache is a, is a big improvement over some of the other cards available with a similar effect. It uh, costs you only one action, which is great, and if you don't happen to need the supplies, you uh, can take resources, which are always going to be useful uh, to most investigators. Now, I'm not convinced spending three experience points for an extra resource is a good idea if you don't need the supplies, considering there seem to be more and more ways to generate extra resources released with every expansion. But uh, I guess the versatility has to come at some sort of price. If we're going to see more cards that add ammo, charges, or supplies, I'm uh, I'm really hoping they follow this model rather than the one uh, like Contraband. That wraps up my review of the Survivor and Neutral cards in the Pallid Mask, as well as uh, the, the entire uh, Mythos pack. I'm uh, a big fan of Waylay, and I can't wait to test it in uh, my Wendy Adams deck. Investigators with high agility and uh, access to the survivor card pool now have a really viable option to take out dangerous enemies or enemies with uh, high health totals in one shot. I've been uh, waiting for a card like this for a long time, and uh, I'm glad to glad to see it uh, finally arrive. Uh, a chance encounter gives investigators such as Ashcan Pete a way to bring Duke back from the dead permanently, something its uh, level zero counterpart could not do. You could also use it to fetch other powerful allies, such as Peter Sylvester, Aquina, Dr. Mylan Christopher, or uh, Leo DeLuca. Uh, I should also mention that the Dunwich Legacy campaign is brimming with allies with powerful effects that, uh, that might be worth returning uh, to play permanently as well. As for level 3 Emergency Cash, it's one of those cards that I think it's going to get stronger as we see more cards that use supplies. And not just cards that use supplies, but more powerful cards that use supplies. There are a couple viable targets for it at the moment. Uh, Strange Solution Acidic Eye Core, chief among them. I'd uh, prefer to play two copies of Strange Solution Acidic Eye Core, but uh, that's not always possible. I uh, may not be convinced these types of cards are necessary, but uh, that's just one man from Lang's opinion. As always, I'd uh, encourage you to try out the cards for for yourself and uh, see how they work with your playstyle. Everybody has a different different playstyle, and uh, sometimes a card that doesn't work for me will uh, work wonders for you. As for for uh, this Mythos pack, I think it's a it's a fantastic pack. There are a lot of really interesting cards in it, and. Uh, 
I'm looking forward to the release of Black Star's Rise, uh, which uh, should come out next week, I think. And I will be uh, bringing you the card reviews uh, for that pack as well. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a great deal. Have you had a chance to play with Waylay yet or any of these other cards? Let me know in the comments uh, how it went. I'm uh, quite curious to know if that uh, if three resources is too much to pay for it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. Uh, I can, If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.